So how many are you in the book? Got a few. Okay, so for the rest of you, let me fill you in. This, so far you had a little excerpts there that came from all the sections up until part two. Put them all together here. So this was from all different spots in, in the book so far. I picked this book because I feel that it's a book that will not interfere with any other faith that you have or any kind of idea. It's just really to get in touch with who are you, right? This is something that as true spiritual seekers, people who really want to take responsibility for their spiritual growth need to ask themselves, who am I, okay? So when you meet somebody and they say, who are you? What is our typical answer? Our name. Our name, our name right? And what is the name? Collection of letters, as Michael says in the books, right? It's, it's just a collection of letters. That's not who you are. What's another thing we do when we don't say our name? Someone says, who are you? What do we say? Your vocation. Our vocation, right? A lot of us identify with our vocation. But that's not, that's not who we are. That's something we are doing currently, most of the time, to make money. It has nothing else to do with who we are, right? So what's another answer we give to people when they ask us, who are we? Sorry? Where we were born. Where we were born, right, yes. Our ethnic backgrounds, right? Our family backgrounds, or you know, where we live. This is who I am. We just had the 4th of July. We're all American, right? That's not who we are. Who was another answer? The roles we play. The roles we play. Okay, like what? Mother, father. Mother, father, right? That's another thing, eh? That's not who we are. Is everyone getting this so far? It's like, okay, we're looking at it, and this is important for us to do that because a lot of the pain and sorrow in our life is attached to who we think we are rather than who we are. What were some of the other things somebody? Our religion. Our religion, exactly, right? People were very set. The religion defines who we are, but it still gives you a framework of what to do. But who are you? Who are you? Who is the you that all the spiritual texts are talking to? Who is that you? So Michael is giving us an opportunity to take a look, to try to find that you, so we can live more in the you. So um, as some of you have noticed that Reverend Gerard does, we believe, channeling. So it's more of a channeling meditation that you've gotten as some work that he tunes into and gives it. So this beautiful opportunity to listen to his channeling and then to be sitting there, and all of a sudden, this is what came to me. I'm gonna share it with all of you. We are this. That light, that beautiful, right? All of you, when you come in here, are attracted to this, right? Yes? Okay, because it's a memory, right? It's a memory of that light that's coming in, right? That light that's shining in. And now we have this light, our higher self, our eternal self, that you, and that you is now witnessing stuff. Got the stuff here. We got our bodies. We got our jobs. We got the things that we're doing and all this all pretty, nice, wonderful stuff. And then that stuff is that more stuff out here. We got more stuff to distract us. And all that stuff is in our heads, in our minds, coming through as thoughts. Thoughts. Michael was saying that at one time, that he, one of his greatest awakenings was that he was sitting with a friend and they were having a nice time, but then they, they came to a moment where it just stopped. The conversation just stopped and they were just sitting there. And he heard inside his head, he heard himself saying, wow, it's kind of awkward. What should I say? Should I talk about the weather? Should I talk about this? Should I talk about that? Should... And all of a sudden he heard himself talking to himself about the things that he should be talking to his friend about. And then he said, wait a second, there's a lot of chatter going on in my mind. I'm not even being here with my friend. What is this all about? And he just turned to his friend and he said, 
you have a lot of stuff going on in your head? Because right now I'm trying to think about something to think about, to talk to you about. He's like, yeah, that happens to me all the time. And they just started to get this awareness of the busyness of the stuff that we put in the way of truly being in the presence, in the light, in that awareness, right? So we want to have an awakened consciousness and meanwhile, we don't understand that the thing that is getting in the way most of all is the chatter in our own minds. Are you with me here? Yeah. Okay, so even while I'm talking, the voice in your head is going to try to overtalk me. Pay attention, it's in there. It's telling you about something else. Is it telling you about an ache or a pain? Is it telling you about something you have to do later on? Is it reminding you of what you did yesterday? Is it telling you where so-and-so is it? What is it saying? The voice in your head never stops, but it's not who you are you are. And part of the work of our spiritual awakenings are being able to be aware and conscious is to stop being so unconscious about all of these voices, all of these thoughts that keep going through our minds. Think of it. Think of the freedom that comes when we let go of all of the chatter in our minds. We get to be in what, to me, was one of the most important things about what Gathering of Light is all about. It is about this, this line from A Course of Miracles that inspired me so much, which is a universal theology is impossible, but a universal experience is not only possible, but necessary. So we can now shift that to a universal mind chatter is impossible to stop to cease, to go anywhere else it is not something that's going to solve anything or help us with anything. It's only going to cause more confusion and more pain, but a universal experience of the freedom of release from that chatter is what we all seek, is what will give us all that sense of elevation. And in that moment, at that place, that is where that connection lies. That is where we come back to here. We come back. So our work is to get more in touch with being present with the presence. And that will happen automatically. That is your birthright. That is the truth of who you are as we just let the other stuff just go by. And not attach to it. Oh, I like this one. I'm holding on to this thought. I'm holding on to this role. I'm holding on to this, because this could even represent my, my body. Who I am in this self. What this body seems to be doing. Is that who we are? No. No, right? Because I can take a picture of you when you were five. Is that the same body? Anybody here still have the same body from when they were five years old? No. Right? It's not. And God forbid we lost a limb. We didn't lose a piece of ourselves in our true self. This place this connection to the truth of who we are is so important. And the book, our experience for this summer, is going to help us strengthen our resolve, strengthen our ability to be more in that place of that universal presence, of truly understanding who we are as an unseparated, Self connected to the all. Sound good? Yeah. 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 yeah? It's how's your how's your mind chatter going? 
oh, how's that gonna happen? I don't know if I can make it all the time. Do I have to get the book now? What if I get the book now? What if, what, do I have to read it? I don't like me, Nora. I read it already and it didn't really get that much out of it. Yeah, that one. That one. <laughs> It's all the mind chatter. But just think about it. When we can expose ourselves, what happens? What happens when you say out loud part of that mind chatter that you've been holding on to so much that has become a weight now that you've been carrying around? When we get honest about it, when we really can look at it, when we really just allow it to be what it is, then we can be empowered, we can grow, and we can be more present to the presence around us. It's easier to let go of, we can laugh about it. Right? It doesn't have to imprison us, to hold us down, to restrict us, to lessen what we are, because that's what all of that mind chatter does. And one of the things that he says in here when he says, when he talks about the inner growth is completely dependent upon the realization that the only way to find peace and contentment is to stop thinking about yourself. Because that's what the mind chatter is all about. Telling you who you think you are. It's not the truth. That's what we come here to celebrate. And all of that no matter how magnificent, no matter how hard you work at being so wonderful of who you are, and all of you have worked very hard. That who you are is beyond that. It is beyond the body, beyond time and space. It is your eternal, true you. This summer, let's live in it. This summer, let's help each other really find it, really know it, and most of all, really thrive in it. Sound good? Yes. Excellent. So it is. So it is.